Hello everyone, today we have a very interesting question from Math Olympiad. We have x to the fifth power plus x to the fourth power plus one equal to zero and we need to solve our question. You can, if you have your solution, you can also write your solution down into the comment section and then we will check our answers. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you a really interesting and tricky move. Let's try to rewrite this expression in another way. From the left side, we have x to the fifth power, x to the fifth power plus x to the fourth power and right now we don't have x to the third power so instead of this x to the third power we don't have it I'm, I'm going to write a really tricky expression I'm going to write the next one I'm going to write plus x cube and minus x cube it changed nothing but in the same way this is equal to zero and it will helps us to to factor our question so this is equal to zero it changed nothing and right now I'm going to write the same thing with x square so we will have plus x square minus x square. As you can see, we don't have expression with the second power, but I'm going to write this one. So this expression is also equal equal to zero, it changed nothing. And the same thing I'm going to write with x. So we have plus x and minus x. Okay, this expression is also equal to zero, so it changed nothing. When we simplify it, we will have absolutely the same expression as in the beginning. But don't forget about this one, so plus one and equal to plus one and equal to zero. And what are we going to do next? Right now, let's try to group, okay? Let's try to group our expression. First of all, let's group this x to the fifth, x to the fourth, and plus x cubed. Let's take it inside parentheses. So as a result, we have x to the fifth plus x to the fourth, x to the fourth, and plus x cube plus this x cube. Let's take it inside inside parentheses. Right now, let's write this expression. So minus x cube. Okay, so let's do this. Let's write it in the second parenthesis. Let's write minus x cube because we finished right here. Let's write this expression inside parentheses. So we have minus x cube. So minus x cube. Right now, let's take this minus x square, but with because of this negative sign before parentheses, we need to write plus x square. So plus x square, and let's take this minus x, but because because of this minus, we have plus x, not negative x, but inside parentheses we will have plus plus x. Okay, this is our second parenthesis, and in the end, let's take this x square, x, and one. We we leave it like that. So we take x cube, x square, x, and we still have x square, x, and plus one. So with the plus sign, we will have plus x square plus x and plus one. So I hope you understand this step. You can also pause the video and I hope you will understand it. In this parenthesis, I, I take uh, x cube, I take minus x square and I take x. In the last parenthesis, we will have uh, we will have x square, x and one. So everything is is great. We take all of these all of these values. You can easily open parenthesis and you will see the same thing as in the beginning. Okay. Right now, let's try to factor from here from the first parenthesis. Let's try to factor x cube. We can easily do this. So let's factor our x cube, and inside parenthesis we will have x square, x square plus x and plus one. This is our first parenthesis. In the second parenthesis, we can also factor our x. So we have minus x, and right here we have x square, x square, plus x, and plus, plus one. And in the last parenthesis, we can't factor anything, so we have the same thing. So we have plus x square, plus x, and plus and plus one. And right now, if you look closely, I hope you understand why I do this uh, tricky move, because if you look closely, we have x square plus x plus one, we have x square plus x plus one, and we have the same x square plus x plus one. So we can easily factor our this uh, expression in parentheses. Okay, so let's do this right now. So we have x square plus x and plus one. And in another parentheses, we will have x cube minus x and plus one. So x cube minus x and plus one equal to equal to zero so as you can see we factor our question and right now it's much easier for us because we have uh, x cubed so the third power we have a second power which is also great but in the beginning we had x to the fifth power which is like more complicated for us and right now let's try to simplify uh, let's try to solve these both uh, expressions because right here a product equal to zero when the first parenthesis is equal to zero so we have x square plus x plus one equal to zero, or we have the second expression. We have a cubic equation, x cubed minus x and plus one equal to equal to zero. Right now, let's start, for example, with this and with this equation. This is our quadratic equation, which is like much easy, more, more easier for us uh, than this uh, cubic equation. So right now, let's solve this quadratic equation. First of all, we can easily write our coefficients. We have a equal to one, b equal to one and c 
is equal to c is equal to one so right now let's find our uh, our discriminant let's find our discriminant d is equal to b square minus four times a and times c so right now we're going to solve this this equation this one we solve a little bit later so let's find our discriminant let's plug in each of these coefficients into this spot so we have one square minus four times one and times one as a result we have one minus four which is equal to minus three so as a result we can easily say that this is our two complex roots so let's find it as a result we have x first and x second equal to our basic formula minus b plus minus square root of d and all over all over to a so let's plug in each of these elements we know everything we know discriminant we know a b and c so let's plug in this into this uh, formula so we have minus b minus one plus minus square root of minus three minus uh, square root of our discriminant and all over two times a so two times two times one okay so right now let's simplify our now let's simplify our expression first of all we can easily write this minus three at, uh, as uh, minus one times three so we have minus one plus minus square root of minus three minus one times times three and right now we're going to split this expression because right here we have square root of uh, two expressions we have a product so we can easily consider it as a square root of the minus one and square root of square root of three so as a result we have minus one plus minus square root of minus one times square root of times square root of three and all over all over two this square root of minus one this is our complex unit we can easily write it as i so we, as a result we have minus one plus minus right here this is our complex unit this is our i and all over uh, we have square root of three still here and all over all over two and these are two complex roots we can easily divide it by two just to split it by a real part and imaginary part so as a result we have minus one half when we divide it by two and right here we have plus minus i square root of three over over two so this is our two uh, two complex roots so as a result we can write that our x first is equal to minus one half plus i square root of 3 over 2 this is our first root and the second root x second equal to minus one half minus i square root of 3 over 2 this is our and this is our second second root but don't forget about this second parenthesis we still have this parenthesis uh, right now we solve this quadratic equation we have two roots but don't forget about this cubic equation we need to solve this cubic equation and then we will have we'll have more roots so as you can see according to fundamental theorem of algebra we have the third power so it means that uh, right here inside this parenthesis hides three roots right here we find two roots and right here right now we're going to solve this cubic equation and we will find three more roots so right now let's solve this cubic equation right so in the previous step we factor our Question. we had two parentheses and we solve these parentheses on the left side we write a quadratic equation and we find these two complex roots right now don't forget about the second parentheses because we need to find all of these roots so right now we're going to solve this cubic equation so let's rewrite it so let's do this on, the, on this right side so we have x cubed minus x and plus one equal to equal to zero there are, there are a lot of methods how can you solve this cubic equation but i'm going to show you this one this is cardano method first of all let's write uh, under this let's write our basic basic way how can we express this cubic equation cubic equation can be expressed as x cubed plus p times x and plus and plus q and and when we look closely to our question we can easily say that our p equal to minus one so from here we have P equal to minus one and our q is equal to is equal to one and there are uh, formulas we can easily find our discriminant to this cubic equation discriminant looks like that so we have d equal to we have q over two we need to square it and plus p over three to the third to the third power and right now let's find our discriminant to this cubic equation so this is equal to from here we have instead of q we're going to plug in one so one half to the second power so we have one half to the second power and we have plus we have instead of this p we can easily plug in this minus one so we have minus one third minus one third to the third power and as a result we can easily find our discriminant we have one fourth one fourth minus one over 27 and the basic sign will be negative because we have third power and when we have odd power we can consider it as a, a negative sign so we have minus one over 
over 27. Right now, let's find our common denominator. As a result, we have 108 our common denominator. Right here, we have 27. Right here, we have 4. So we have 27 minus 4. And our discriminant equal to 23 over 108. And this is a great discriminant for us because this is a positive discriminant. It, it means that over here we will find a real solution. So D is positive. So it means that right here we will find one real roots. So it was our discriminant. Right now, let's try to find our x. But according to this Cardano formulas, x is equal to x is equal to u plus v. And according to our formula, we can easily find our u and v. This is how our formula looks like. So when we start with the u, u looks like that. When we have cubes root minus q over q over 2 and plus square root of discriminant. All right, this is our u and we can also find our v, but we can find a little bit later. This is absolutely the same thing, but with the with the negative sign. So right now let's find let's find our u. As a result, we will have cubes root cubes root of minus one half. Instead of this q, we're going to plug in this one. So we have minus one half minus one half plus this square root of our discriminants of square root of uh, 23 over 108, 23 over 108, and this is equal to, we have cubes root of minus 0 0.5, this is our minus 1 half minus 0 0.5, and this, uh, this square root of 23 over 108 equal to uh, 0 0.461. And when we find our cubes root, we can easily say that our um, our u is equal to approximately equal to cubes root of minus 0 0.039, which is approximately equal to minus 0 0.339. So when you can also check it in your calculator, but I hope you understand it. I hope you learn how to find this u. And when we find v, v is absolutely the same thing as u, but with the with the negative sign. So v is equal to we have cubes root of minus q over 2 minus square root of d. And let's plug in each of these elements into this into this spot. As a result, we have cubes root of minus. Instead of this q, we're going to write this, this one. So the same thing, but with the negative sign. Right here, positive sign. Right here, a negative sign. So minus 1 over 2 minus square root of discriminant. Discriminant equal to 23 over 108. As a result, we have cubes root of minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, and instead of this square root of 23 over 108, we're going to write th the same expression, so minus 0 0.4461, 0 0.461. And when we simplify it, our v is equal to, so approximately equal to, minus 0 0.98. 9 and 5. And when we look closely in the beginning, we had that our x is equal to u plus v. We need to add this expression by this one. So we need to add it. So our x is equal to, so approximately equal to, we have minus 0 0.339. We need to add to this expression minus 0 0.985. So when we add these both expressions, we will have that our x approximately equal to minus 1.3. 3 to 4. And this is our real number solution. We don't have e, we don't have we don't have complex unit right here. So this is our real number root. And we need to say that x second and third will be complex will be complex root. Complex complex roots. Okay, so right now let's write our final answer. We find our real number solution. As you can see right here we we find two complex solution right here we find one real solution which is also really great so don't forget about this second second parenthesis so let's write our final answer to this to this question right now we can see a graph you can see a plot to this challenge you can see this a uh, point of intersection so which is also which is also really great so let's write our final answer to this question so our answer so x first let's start with the real number root so x first is equal to so approximately equal to minus 1.324 3, 4. this is our real real number root right now let's write x second and third we found it before so in the first parenthesis so our x second is equal to minus one half plus i square root of three over over two x third is equal to minus one half minus i square root of three over two square root of three over two and we know that this these roots are complex, complex, 
complex roots. Complex roots, and we know from here, from the second parenthesis, that we are here we have two complex roots. So as a result, we need to write that our x fourths and first uh, and fifths are also are also complex complex roots. So this is our answer to this question. We we solve it completely. We know that two complex roots. We know exactly how these two complex roots looks like, and we find our one real real number root, which is also which is also really great. I hope you see this. I hope you see these points of intersection, and I hope you understand this explanation. You can also write a question down into the comment section. Write your notes about this question down into the comment section. And thank you for your time. See you in the next video.